Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Ek and today we'll be diving into cascading with SQL Alchemy. Cascading is all about how SQL Alchemy handles the relationships between your models, specifically when changes are made like deleting or updating objects. As we've already gone over in a previous video, SQL Alchemy allows you to define relationships between tables. And when you work with those relationships, you often need to control how changes to one object affects related objects. This is where cascading comes in. It lets you control the behavior of related objects when performing actions like deleting, merging, or updating records. The cascading actions that we will cover in SQL Alchemy are going to be the save update, merge, delete, delete orphan, refresh expire, expunge, and all options. All of these actions can be specified when defining relationships between the models in SQL Alchemy. So let's take a look at how to do that. So here we have our setup that we're going to use to view each of these cascade options. We have all of our imports here at the top. Then we have our base, which has an ID. Then we have a parent, which is inheriting from the base with a relationship of a one to many children's object. Then a child class that references the parent. And for both of these, I do have these wrapper strings to make it easier when we see the outputs later in the video. So then here we create our engine, putting it with SQLite into memory, creating all of our tables and getting our session. So by default, SQL Alchemy applies a cascade of save, update, and merge. So if you don't specify this at all, it applies that by default. So let's take a look at how these actually work. The save update cascading action is when an object is added to the session and all objects related to it are also added to the same session. Here we'll take a look at an example of the save update. And the way you use the save update is something you've already been doing if you've been using SQL Alchemy. So we can do this by creating a parent and child object and then adding the child to our parents.children. Then we go ahead and add just the parent to the session. And whenever we do this, it will automatically add all the children from this parent into the session as well. And then we have an assert here, asserting that the child is in fact in the session. If for some reason it wasn't, it would fail and exit the code, but this will return true. And we'll see what the values are before committing and then after committing. So we'll go ahead and run this. We can see there's a parent with an ID of none. And then for all the children in this parent object, the child have a parent ID of none. So the IDs have not been applied to the parent and child yet. But after we go ahead and commit it to the database, the ID for the parent is updated, and then all the parent IDs for the children are updated as well. Right, and the next one we'll look into is the merge cascade action. And for all these other actions that we go over, I'm leaving the save update here to make it really easy to just go ahead and add it to the session and commit it and update the references accordingly. But you can comma separate the action, so we just have a comma and then a merge. If a parent object is merged into the session with session.merge, then all the related objects from that parent are also merged into the session as well. Merging an object into the session will either fetch the current object in the current session, update it, or create a new object if it's not in the session already. So here we'll take a look at an example of the merge. So we have our basic setup up here, except for this, we're gonna go ahead and print out the original parent, and then we're gonna go ahead and close the session. And since we close it, this parent is now considered detached from the session. And here we try to update the children relationship, even though it's considered detached already. In some cases, this will throw an error. And even though it's detached, we do add a new child to this children relationship. Then we'll go ahead and create a new session. And we'll go and do a session.merge of the parent to go ahead and add this in. And this will bring our parent back into the session. And since this parent already does exist in the database, it'll just fetch that object and update it. Then we'll go ahead and print out the merged object and commit it. Then we'll go ahead and refetch this parent from the database. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see the original committed parent right here is right here in the console with the updated values. Then we have our merged parent in the session, which is right here. And this has the parent with the first child and the second child, but the second child doesn't have an ID or a parent ID yet, since it hasn't been committed or flushed in the database. But here we go ahead and commit it and we go ahead and get that new query with the parent object and then it has all the values completely updated. Next we'll take a look into the delete and the delete will automatically delete all the children whenever the parent is deleted. And we'll go ahead and set this up. Here we're going to change this merge we just had into a delete and we'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. Here we have a parent and we are assigning it a child, adding it to our session and committing. We're going to go ahead and query the child table and get all the entries and this will not return an empty list. Then we'll go ahead and delete the parent, commit it, and we should see that all of the entries for the child table are gone since we only had one child associated to one parent. So we'll go ahead and run this. 
And so we can see here that we did have one child added in the database. So this printed a list of one child right here. And then after we deleted the parent, because our cascade was delete, the children was also deleted. And so we have now an empty list. So no more entries in our child table at all. And now we'll look into the delete orphan action. And you can do this by specifying delete dash orphan here in your cascade. And this just means if you remove a child from a parent's relationship list, the child is automatically deleted from your database. Automatically deleting orphans can be useful, but might lead to data loss if not used carefully. If you do take a look at other SQL Alchemy code, a very common thing you will see with cascades is this all comma delete orphan. And this just means that the child will follow along with the parent object in every single cascading case. And that the child can be deleted once it's no longer associated with the parent. So we'll go ahead and take a look at an example of how to use this delete orphan. So here we have our engine creating the tables in our session. Let me go ahead and create a parent and give it a child. Add that parent, commit it, and then we'll query everything from the child table and print it out to the screen. Then we'll go do it a parent.children.clear to remove all the children from the parent's children list, commit those changes, and then print all the children from the children table. So if we go ahead and run this, we will see that on this first print statement, we have one child in the child table. But after we clear it from the children list, it performs that delete orphan operation. And now there's no more children in the children list. If we come up to the create engine and add this echo equals true, then go ahead and run it again. We can see what's happening behind the scenes. So we can see right here, this is the first print statement that we had. That is going to be right here on line 44. Then once we go ahead and perform all these operations right here, it has a delete operation from children where children ID equals the question mark and it puts it in there. Once we go ahead and commit the changes from clearing the children's list on the parent object, behind the scenes, it does perform this delete operation right here since we did specify delete orphan. And that is why in the end, there is nothing in the children's table as on line 49. And next, we'll look into the refresh expire action. To demonstrate this, we will use the accession.expire function. So when a parent is expired, meaning it is no longer up to date, all the related objects are also expired. And whenever you try to access them, they will be refetched from the database. One thing to note is if you're using async SQL Alchemy, the refresh expire cascade may not be desirable because it will expire objects more aggressively. You can handle this a bit better by using the async sessions in SQL Alchemy if you choose to go down the async route. And so we can do this just by specifying the refresh dash expire here in the cascade. So we'll go ahead and take a look down at our example. We have the same setup here as the other examples. For here, we'll print out what happens before you expire. It prints out the children. Then we expire the parent object and you can optionally pass an expire all with a list of objects you want to expire, just like you have an add all option for adding stuff to your session. Then we'll go ahead and print out the parent.children again after we expire the parent. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see that we have the same output here, but the magic applies behind the hood. So we'll add an echo equals true here. Then we'll go ahead and run this again. Then we can see right here, here's our before expire as right here. And then since our children relationship is lazily loaded, it goes ahead and performs the select operation here for the children and prints it out right here. But after we execute the session.expire, it'll then refetch the data here since it was expired and no longer up to date and then print out again. If we were to come up to line 45 and just copy and paste the line and we'll go ahead and run this again, we can see it printed out twice here in the before expire since it only need to fetch the data one time. But as soon as we expired the parent, it then needs to refetch the data for both the parent and the children. Next, we'll take a look at the expunge action. To demonstrate this action, we will use the session.expunge function. And this will just mean that if you remove the parent from the session, its related children are also removed. So if you try to access them again, you will get an error. So it is a little bit different than expiring objects from the session. And we can do this by adding the expunge here in the cascade. So we will go ahead and scroll down and take a look at our example. We have our same setup here. And we're using this session.expunge function to go ahead and expunge it from the session. Then we'll go ahead and assert that the parent is not in the session. If it was still in the session, this would return false and then give us some kind of error. And if we do try to access the children inside of this parent object, it will throw a detached instance error. So we'll go ahead and run this file. And we can see it did throw the error. And we caught it with the parent.children are not in the session. If we were to comment out this try block and run it again, this will give us a bit more of the error. And the last one we'll look into is the all action for the cascade. And this just means everything from save update, merge, refresh, expire, expunge, and delete. It's just a shorter way of doing that. So you don't have to type that out each time, but it doesn't include the delete orphan action. So if you want that behavior, then you have to add that in yourself. 
And like I said earlier, this is a very common thing that you will see inside of SQL Alchemy code bases. So do be careful with the all cascading option because the all cascading will trigger every action, which may lead to unintended consequences if you're not familiar with all of the cascades. There can be some very specific situations where this happens, but generally you won't have to really worry about this. Whether you're building CRUD APIs or managing complex data trees, knowing how to cascade properly can save you tons of bugs. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment with any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.